Well, gang, we are on another adventure today. Today we are going to this very small town of 300 people. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's called Bellflower. Why are we going there? Because there's a man that's buried there by the name of James Ward Abel, who died in 1874. And there's something really unique going on with his grave. Let me tell you. This all intrigues me because it centers upon the term, have you had the, heard the term, the safety coffin? The safety coffin is a coffin where, well, people were afraid back in the 1800s that they would be buried alive. Actually, it happened quite a number of times, even starting back from the 1600s, 1700s. The doctors were terrible. They didn't know. They thought the person was dead. They bury him in horrific stories. And uh, this man that we're going to visit, he was afraid of that, like many. So they designed all kinds of patents and all kinds of graves, all kinds of coffins where you could pull a bell and signal. Let's say you woke up in there. And uh, they had other devices where... Um, they had like safety hatches, and we'll talk about that, where if you got stuck or you, you, were, you woke up in the tomb, you could turn a wheel and open a vault, kind of like a door in a submarine. So again, we'll get into this stuff, I'll show you. But this town uh, is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. We're on a three hour drive mission to central Illinois. This is out of Bloomington probably 30 miles east and it was uh, the town was founded I think in 1871 so when I get there we'll uh, we'll continue with this story but I'm super excited and intrigued to see if we can find this grave that has the safety hatch you can't find I don't think there's anywhere else in the Midwest even if you know of something let me know I want to go there I want to see it uh, graves with safety bells, um, safety coffins, hatches. Uh, let's let's go explore it. So anyway, when we get to the town, uh, we'll pick it back up. All right, gang, we are approaching the town of Bellflower right now after this long, windy drive through cornfields. And uh, I'll give you a little background on this town. I think it it says uh, three, just over 300 people live here. Uh, like I said, it was established in 1871. It was this guy from Massachusetts, George Nelson Black. He was, uh, he came to Springfield, Illinois, and he somehow ended up here, and I think it was because of this railroad right here. And he made a deal with the railroad. He, he got very wealthy in Springfield. He came here. God knows why he picked this location. I mean, there's nothing here. Uh, but what he did was he made a deal with the railroad. He bought uh, Bellflower. Uh, it was for mining and railroads. He had subscribed $30,000 in 20-year bonds toward the construction of what the uh, what was called the, the Gilman Clinton and Springfield Railroad. So anyway, the condition of the funding was that there would be a railroad stop here. So uh, himself, he purchased 100 acres and upsprang the town. I don't know what the, the people migrated here for. The Abel family came. They were they were maybe here before. The town was established, and uh, I'll give you a little background of uh, their family. And the cemetery, by the way, we're through the town now, and the, uh, the cemetery is straight ahead. I'm really excited. I really want to, I hope we can find this grave. I called the mayor, uh, you know, if you call, you call the town, um, you know, to get information on the cemetery. I got the mayor's home phone number 
course, recording no answer. So we're going to be on our own trying to find this grave. What we have going for us is the cemetery is very small, looks very small. So we're just going to have to wing it. But uh, I'll give you a little background on the, uh, the family. He had, of course, he had a wife. He had um, two daughters and one son. And uh, the wife has a bio, it says, on Ancestry, but uh, I couldn't find uh, where that was. His wife's name was Marina Jane. She was born in 1832, and she died in 1882. She was 49 years old. Oldest daughter was Rosa, uh, 1861, born, and she died in 1899. She has a bio too. Maybe if someone is good with ancestry, we could find out a little bit more about Marina Jane and his oldest daughter, Rosa. He had a son, William, who was born March 23rd, 1864. I see the cemetery, here it is. It's right up ahead. I'll just finish by saying he had a, a second daughter, Aura, 1869 to 1922 so uh, he, he died young and his wife uh, he died at 46 and his wife died at 49 years old here's the cemetery uh, it's it's striking it's uh, up here it looks like a lot of new tombstones so maybe the older ones are in the back yeah this is it hey let's go in let's take let's take a look guys very exciting. We are in, in, in. God, I'm so excited. I don't know why. You know what? This, uh, this whole subject is just fascinating. All right, we're going to pull over here, and we're going to start looking for the Abel family. All right, so I'll get set up, and we'll get, uh, we'll get a walking. Well, we're here, and there's no snow on the ground. We're so lucky. I brought a bucket of hot water just in case there was snow because I just had to see this. But I'm going to tell you some stories as, as we search. Safety coffins, premature burials. It was horrible, horrible stuff. I mean, it's just a nightmare to even think about what some of these people went through as they uh, as they were buried and they were buried alive there were a lot of accounts there were a lot of accounts of this back well, going all the way back to the 1600s it's unbelievable look at this here's this has got to be a child Margaret two years old you have the lamb the sign of the lamb sign of the child well let's start looking and I'll start telling you the stories I'm going to tell you some stories here that are pretty frightening as we walk along now this all started as early as the 14th century guys when a tomb was opened, there was the body of this philosopher, John Dunn Scotus. This is from the High Middle Ages. And he was reportedly found outside his coffin. His hands were torn up in a way that suggests he tried to free himself. I mean, it goes all the way back then, and I'm sure it happened many more times. The 17th century saw lots of these premature burials. I mean, you had ec uh, epidemics like and plagues like cholera and smallpox. There were some sources that uh, there was one source they found where they found 219 instances of narrow escapes from pre premature burials. But there were 149 cases of actual premature burials, 10 cases 
where the bodies were accidentally dissected before death, and two cases in which embalming was started on the not yet dead. So you can imagine that people were scared. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. These uh, alarm bells and uh, these, they call them the, the escape hatches. Uh, here we have a, here we have a soldier that we should give some respect to. Robert Scarborough. He was in the U.S. Navy, World War II. He was born in 1912, so he was in his late 20s when the action started. Thank you for your service, Mr. Scarborough. Yeah, I can see, as I look way up there, I can see that the monuments are getting older and older. And let me tell you, some of these go back to almost the 1700s. His mom is buried back in Bloomington. Now you go back, you got to figure Bloomington, which is 30 miles west of here. I mean, that was a bigger town. That was probably the town in the 1700s getting established. And it is where she was buried. She was born in 1790. His mom. So she's not here. Now I see some older, I see some older gravestones. Look at this. Isn't this something? This is a time capsule, guys. Look at this one. Elizabeth Houston. She died in 1872. She was only, she was only 27. Wife of Henry Tobin. I wonder what happened. Look, I see these posts here. It kind of outlines, I think, what is a family plot. Look at this. And here, right here, there's just a, there's just a stone in the ground. Is this the marker of somebody? I mean, this goes way back, guys. Way back. Yeah, this is, this has got to be the family plot. Charles Francis, son of C.W. and M.C. Johnson. 1883 to 1902 is what it says. I don't want to step in there. There are lots of graves right here. Lots of graves. Yes, the graves are getting older. These are going way back. Look at this. Interesting. Melting away. Like I always say, with the sands of time, the marble and limestone. Well, there's lots of stories. There's a story about a woman named Alice Blunden who was buried alive. She was knocked out after having uh, taken in. At the in the day, poppy tea. That was uh, a tea made from uh, unwashed seeds, pods, and it contained morphine, codeine, sedatives, so she maybe OD'd on it. And uh, the doctors, you know, they, they would stick a mirror under their nose. And if you didn't see a breath, they're like, well, they're dead. No pulse. I don't even know if they checked the pulse. Well, her family quickly made arrangements for a burial. And two days after she was laid in the ground, there were kids playing. There were kids playing nearby, and they heard noises. So the schoolmaster goes over, and he checks the gravesite, and he finds that she's still alive. But it took another day to exhume her. Why? I don't know. I mean, wouldn't you start digging right away? No. So she was took another day she was so close to death she was returned to her grave where a guard stood by before deserting his post next morning she was found dead but only after struggling to free herself 
once more. I mean, that's just a crazy story. A lot of stories of people scratching, ripping their clothes, pulling their hair out. Look at this up here. What is this? This is crazy looking. Look at this. What the heck? This is really spooky. I think it's the remnants of a giant tree. And they burned out the roots maybe. And they're having fires here. I don't know. Pretty creepy. Okay, we're looking for a white, a white stone. That's the one thing that we're looking for. Maybe over here I see a white stone. It's, that could be it. I don't know. There are uh, these bells. I love. I want to find a grave that has that this that safety bell. I thought I saw one on one of the videos. One of the other cemetery guys, maybe it was Hollywood, forever it's called, I don't know. But there was a picture out east of one. This is Nellie J. 11 days? She only lived for 11 days? Oh, 1876. It looks like somebody came back and painted these. How nice. Black paint. Can really read these. There's a story of a woman in Pikeville, Kentucky, and in Pikeville, there's a woman named Octavia Hatcher who was buried alive, and her husband, for some reason, had an intuition that he came back a week, I don't know how long later, and had her exhumed. And sure enough, scratches, the whole inside of the coffin was torn apart. They have, uh, there's somebody who did a, 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 a white docs. Really great guy, you should watch his channel. He did a video on that. I'm, I might dr uh, stop by there on my way to New Orleans, but it's pretty far, it's a little off the route pretty far east in Kentucky. I'm going to be coming through Kentucky. I'm going to be doing Louisville and Lexington. I don't know guys. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to do some searching here. I do not see it, but we've got to be getting close. Um, anyway, I'll put a, I'll put a link for his channel White Dock Cemetery Tours, and watch that uh, watch that video. It's pretty cool. The other thing I'm intrigued with, which is what we're looking for and looking at, is these hatches. And there is out east one that has a wall. I think of five five family members, and I think they're doubled up in there from the names. And it's really intriguing. They, they have doors vertically where it's like those ship doors and submarines when there's a, you know, it's flooding. You got to close the hatch and spin that wheel. It's that same wheel. It's that same wheel. Can you imagine being inside there? Can you imagine, like in the dark, and you're next to another corpse, and you got to roll around and. You know, they said they'd leave water and bread in there, a lot of these, and even a bottle of wine. There's a channel, um, I asked uh, Chris, she has this channel called DD Explores, another cool channel. She just gets in her car and goes. She explores. She's an adventurer like me. I really like Chris, and she said I could use some of her video to show you guys this. This, uh, I think it was Thomas Purcell, as I recall. Really cool. Uh, still today, it's in pristine condition. But check her out. Um, and then there's another 
There's another one that I want to see in, I think it's in Vermont. And it's the guy that has the vision port. Yeah, he was a doctor. I think his name was Smith. Maybe I got it wrong, but he was laid to rest way down in a catacomb with his wife. And in that catacomb, his face is exposed to a six foot tubular concrete tunnel that goes straight up to a glass window. And you can look down. They say years ago you could see his face, his skull. Right now it's just drip mark, dripping water underneath condensation. Wait a minute. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We got it, we got it. Oh my gosh, we've been walking right around it. I, oh my gosh, check it out, guys, guys. Check it out. Sorry, I'm really excited. We found him. We found him, it's right here. Look at this. Have you ever seen anything like this? Holy cow. Look at this. Let me try to get a better angle. Look at that. This is it. This has to be. Let's, let's look at the front here. Man, I've never been, I don't know why I'm so excited. I just, I don't know. This is just really cool. Yeah, this is it. James Ward Abel. James W. Abel. 1874, 46 years old, and some days now. Here is the Abel Monument. It says our parents. And I'm not gonna read all this, but it's hard to read, but I see James W. Abel here. I think his wife is whole. I know his daughters aren't, they're, they're not buried here, his wife is. Oh, here. I don't want to step on this other grave, hold on. It's tough to get an angle here. All right, so I'm gonna get a shot of that so we can read it. Now there's another, there's another little tombstone here. Abel, JW and MJ. 1872. So this is it, guys. Let's take a close look. Look at this. How could you get out? It's too small. It is way too small. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. This, this is the escape hatch. I'm going to put my hand there so you can see how big it is. Okay. Now that is, oh man, it's hollow. There's a hole there, it goes straight to his face. And it would push up, there's gotta be some mechanism. Look at this, look at this. There's the secret mechanism to close him in and open him up. There it is. It's, it's unbelievable. I'm not gonna try to open it, but you can feel you can feel, oh, that'd be horrible to open that. I would never want to see. I would want to see my morbid side. I'm dying to see, but. And look at this. I don't know if this is a separate one or is this part of it? Let me try to get a better angle. Okay, it says patented. All right, I'm gonna try and straddle this. It says patented. Patented March, July 13th, 1875. Is this another escape hatch? Or is it part of that? Um, it has to be another one. And there's, oh, you know what? So this, this little tombstone here could be for, could be for one of the kids, I don't know. I don't know. Wow, this is so exciting. Sorry, it's probably not as exciting for you, but I have been just obsessed with this, thinking about all these type of things. And I think it's because I just try to imagine myself being put in there. And then you're not dead. 
and I'm going to tell you, these look like two of them, and how do you, if you were to open that, you, let me tell you, you would get out. You would squeeze and squeeze for hours if you had to. But if I'm going to put measurements on this, I don't have a tape measure. It is 13 to 14 inches wide and 18 to 20 inches long. I'm going to guess 20 inches by 14. And now think about it. If you're laying in there this way, lengthwise, how do you get your, you want your shoulders to be left and right here. Maybe, maybe he's buried this way. Okay, longitudinally. Let's try, let's just see something here. That's hollow too. If you were to lift that, if you were to lift these, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the faces. The skeletal remains, holy cow. It's right there, I'm surprised. I mean, that looks, I'm telling you something. It looks like this has been open, this one. This has been open. Someone, maybe family members have a look, I don't know. But that is, it's just my own opinion. Well, really cool guys. This is really, uh, Wow, really neat place. Stepping back in time. Well, for the Abel family, I hope you're all resting in peace. Sorry you died so young, but you had a pretty good life here, I'm sure. What were their stories? What were their stories? Well, he never opened the hatch. Was it his fear or was it his wife's fear? You know, I'll bet, I'll bet they always talked about it and I'll bet when he died, you know, when you die or maybe you planned for it, Marina, Marina put that together, but I don't know of anywhere else here in the Midwest, in Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan. Uh, I would love to go see another one. If anybody knows of uh, escape hatch or or the bell Let me know and I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna we're gonna hit it together. I love these adventures You never know what you're gonna find And You know what? What's fun is I just take you along I don't know I take you along and I don't script it and we're all doing this adventure together So see you on the next one signing off Catch you later